At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. It's time for our weekly roast with Doc, and it's going to be a special heroin weekend. Now, we don't mean heroin is the drug. We do mean the female superheroes. We've got a couple of comic books. I said we were going to review the next episode of Harley Quinn from Stephanie Phillips and Riley Rosmo, but there was another big debut this week from Marvel Comics, Hawkeye, Kate Bishop, obviously coinciding with the Disney Plus uh, series. We're going to talk about that as well. How you doing, Doc? I am wonderful, sir. Glad to be here to talk non-X-Men shitty comics. So you were not impressed by Kate Bishop Hawkeye or uh, Harley Quinn? No. In fact, the world would be better off if these comics were never written, published, or the general public subjected to needing to read them. In fact, I would consider them a crime against humanity. Which one would you like to do first? Oh, let's do Harley first. All right, let's do Harley Quinn. Obviously, a, a more high-profile character has been in a, in a state of disarray for quite some time now. Everyone writes the character differently. This is Stephanie Phillips, as I mentioned before, Riley Rosmo. In my opinion, as far as all the ongoing comics with like stable artists on it, like the, the artists that get a lot of work, there's not a worse comic artist at the big two than Riley Rosmo. I despises comic art um i've seen some people use a style similar to his to better effect but i just what is it doctor am i wrong on this one no you are not um look it's is it the worst art style in history well maybe um is it the worst execution of this art style Probably. Um, is it definitely the worst um, use of it in a mainstream superhero comic book? Without a goddamn doubt. Um, this was... It, it, it's it's sketchy when it's trying to be... Like, you, you can do sketchy. Like, a very kind of sketchy style. Or you can do this, like animation style to that that he's aiming for like this it's like this weird um kind of like really really skinny bruce tim like 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 just this weird bruce tim-esque um michael avon oming esque art style and you know they talk about j scott campbell and say Women don't really look like that. People don't look like that. That's not how people look. God damn it. Nobody looks like Riley Rosmo art. You know, if, if you're going to complain about Campbell or Liefeld or Jim Lee or any of the 90s artists, you know, because people don't really look like that. I, I, find me find me somebody that looks like this guard slash patient guy that was running around with a nut sack for a chin all day. Well, well we're going to get to that character. That's one of the few things I think that works within this comic book, just as a character. But as the art goes, I think comic book art is at its best when it is exaggerated. Exaggerated expressions, exaggerated action and whatnot. Yes. But this goes so far beyond exaggeration that it becomes farcical. It's it's not even comical. It's, it's just ridiculous to look at and not in a good way. There's another artist out there that I'll highlight that has a similar style to Riley Rosmo that I personally think is very good. His name's Jorge Rota, uh, Jorge Corona. He obviously was working with Scotty Young on Middle West. He's, he's working on another project right now that's, that's a bit bigger than that one. He, he's got something similar to it, but he doesn't go so far to where, he, like, you can't read this story and take it seriously. I mean, it is a Harley Quinn story, so I guess you can't take it seriously anyway, but... Uh, well, it, it takes you right out of the story because you're just you're so mesmerized about the the pile of dog shit on each page. It is. It looks like um, like 2006 era Scotty Young. If if he didn't know what an eraser was to fix the lines that that were extraneous, uh, 
Um, did they just like ink right over every single line that he put in his roughs? Because this looked like it was colored rough pencils. Um, it didn't, nothing here looked finished. Nothing yeah, looked I've, finished, and it, it it looks worse for that. I it took me completely out of what little story there was in this comic. Now, within there, uh, within that art style, we've seen rather Rossmo on Flash. I think it's even worse there. We've seen him do the um, what was it the the clown hunter character within Batman. It doesn't work for anything. It doesn't matter if you're doing a really cool, exaggerated, fast superhero character, like a grounded superhero, like, or, well, anti hero type character like Clown Hunter, or this more jokey kind of character like Harley Quinn. It just doesn't fit uh, a big two kind of character. He, he shouldn't be working for them. Now, getting into the, to the, um, into the comic book itself by Stephanie Phillips in the story, there's a good portion of this story. And it's that fat security guard who's kind of, uh, rolled in with the wrong crowd and guess what he has a he has a hero arc in this story yeah why isn't this his his comic book he's the only fucking hero in the book well not only is he only only hero he's the only person with an actual story in this comic harley and ivy don't have a story in this comic at all whereas this security it's just guard, them being oh so random in a car yes and then getting bummed at the like and then making a big deal about having the car and then not even seeming to get really that upset when it gets fucking destroyed um this no whereas this the security guard guy with the giant kevin. yeah kevin with the it looks like a clown face tattooed on his neck like he had been a part of the joker gang or something i i, I don't yeah, know he fell, he fell in with the wrong crowd okay and this is I, his redemption yeah i mean like i can i can kind of i can kind of get a little bit of a feeling of what had happened before because coming into this this is another book that i don't read um i was a little off on it um but he comes in he starts from this this position and of doing you know he's kind of a little shitty early on and then there's this fire in whatever asylum or jail cell or whatever whatever institution they're at i think it's trust no it's not trust it's one of those stupid acronyms yeah dc has got too many of them yeah i know not star labs i'm gonna go with that like everything is just not star labs um so he's got the, there's this fire going on and he's like evacuating people and he runs into this one dude that's i guess like fucking hates him already maybe he's his boss maybe maybe something i don't, I don't know and the guy's trapped it's behind safe. this the safe oh, safe okay yes. whatever the shit that is um and this guy's locked behind a door. And even in the moment of his need, he's still a shithead to this Kevin guy. And and I'm like sitting there and I I totally would have understood if Kevin like was just like, you know what, man? Fuck you. I'm gonna leave you to die. Uh you're you're being a shithead. I'm a guy with questionable ethics and, and morals and you know a moral compass um <clears throat> that's trying to do better and i've saved all these other people and gotten them out of this building and you're gonna still be a shithead to me i could have absolutely understood him being like nah man fuck you i'm gonna leave you to die um but he doesn't and he he you know he, you could see that he does have some internal kind of uh like he's going through like a you know internal struggle on how to handle this and he picks the heroic way to handle it and i, I was like okay cool this dude whoever the hell he is with his giant nutsack neck uh his tattooed nutsack neck um is you know actually having it having an emotional and a, and a character arc in this okay i can i can get behind that but then every time it was the Harley and and Ivy stuff, Jesus Christ, there was there was no damn story. Yeah, what? It's, it's 
if this was the Kevin comic book, at least there is a redeeming factor about this story, and it is that Kevin story arc because hey, he he's he's put onto a, a quad quadri, he makes the right choice. The guy screws him over anyway, and he ends up being saved. But the Harley Poison Ivy thing, it's supposed to tie into Fear State where they're trying to connect uh, that version of, of Poison Ivy with Queen Ivy so they can it, it already happened a week ago. Yeah, why we're still reading it. And then uh, there's a there's some like I don't know Z list villain name uh, Keepsake. I've never seen that one. And uh, they I just, have no, yeah, I got no idea who the like some dude with a jetpack and a flame. Yeah, yeah, some dude with a jetpack and a flamethrower. Whoever the hell Keepsake is, uh, and like this weird thing with this gardener chick that's like keeps giving like the side eye, like she's trying to also bang Poison Ivy. Um, I got no idea what the purpose of this comic was, at least well, from here's a... Here's the problem, Doc. Yeah. The, the purpose of the comic was to establish that Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy love each other, but that's already been established. It's been it's, established for quite a while, so there's yeah. no purpose. Yeah, it seems like, because I'm like, the, the, we're not treading new ground here. Was this, is there a, you know, was this the first time they've like made out on panel? Um, no. I didn't think so. Was this the first time that Harley has admitted either in caption or in word bubble that she loves poison ivy? No. As far as I'm aware, no. Um, so all we're doing is treading new ground, D Stephanie. Did you, did you think you were breaking new ground here? Because you're not. As far as I'm aware, and I'm not even a DC guy, I'm pretty certain all this stuff has already been covered. Absolutely has. So it was a waste of, of a comic book if you go in looking for the Harley Quinn story because that thing is just, it's nothing. The Kevin story is pretty good. That's the one redeeming factor. The art is just absolutely atrocious. It's the worst comic art that you're going to see at the big two. I mean, even Gary Brown, who I say, you know, I guess has worse art. At least he's not a regular. He doesn't actually do comics very often. I will just say that my only redeeming, uh, the only redeeming aspect of this is if you ever wanted to see a guy where his second chin was a giant ball sack that had a clown smile tattoo, this is the comic for you. I had no idea where his head ended and his neck began, but hey, this is this is the book. Yeah, so that one, um, it could have been worse if without the Kevin story, it would have been just atrocious. Let's get into something that I think was worse. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about Hawkeye Kate Bishop, number one. I'm going to mess up the name here. Writer is uh, Marie uh, Ninkamp. Artist is Anid Balam. I would say the art isn't quite as bad, but it's completely wooden. It's lifeless. There's no energy to this thing. There's no visual storytelling. There's no flow to it whatsoever. It's just static images. And... I don't know. The, the, I guess the colors did the best they could to make it worth your time, but it's yeah. the story that just this tanks this whole thing because this is every bad writing trope about young characters that you could put into one thing. We start out with uh, Kate Bishop is, is taking out some bad guys, but doesn't have time to put down her phone because she's texting everybody. Yeah, and all this is more of the trope of. Oh my God, teen girls and their telephones. It, it, it's it's obnoxious and makes me hate them as heroes. If they can't. Obnoxious is the best way to describe this entire comic book. Yes. She won't stop talking about the rules of superheroing. She, it, it, she won't let, she won't just stop talking. That's the problem. Kate Bishop in this entire comic does not shut the fuck up at all about anything she doesn't stop talking about superheroes she doesn't talk stop talking about oh my god i love my besties she doesn't talk stop talking about how oh my god i went to the la to find myself and i don't know if i want to go home yet Th this is this is every why a goddamn trope the only thing missing is a ostensible heroine that keeps getting knocked out during the uh actual climactic battles like what happens and doesn't have to actually accomplish anything but just be 
amazing. The she only actually, thing that would make this worse really is if she had a chihuahua with a mohawk, like in a little handbag with her. Yeah, you know what? It, it, if they would have swapped the the big dog out for because that would have absolutely been 100% within character and in fact I'm surprised that the oh yeah cuz we're once again doing secret sisters cuz as far as I recall I I don't recall Kate Bishop ever having a sister prior to this so we're doing secret sisters again and if secret sister would have had the chihuahua with, with a mohawk that would have been even worse so um, yeah the, the internal monologue the dialogue everything about the way kate bishop is written here is unlikable it's obnoxious it's pretentious i don't think kate bishop has really done been done well often in comic books you know it's just more the same but even worse because this is a worse writer uh, a greener writer you can tell uh just by the, the the comic book and the way it flows than the writers that have worked with kate bishop on the past there's a good Kate Bishop out there. It's on Disney Plus. Uh, they, they did a good job of establishing her motivations and not making her completely annoying. Unfortunately, uh, Kevin Feige forgot to, to send the memo down to Marvel Comics that this is who Kate Bishop is now. So we're just continue getting this, you know, this, um, you know, two dimensional, vapid, lame ass hero that no one can believe in. Um, well, no, I think what we're still getting is not huntress there's a good there's a good kate bishop out there her name's huntress and she's in dc um because that's what kate has all was was designed to be she was designed to be marvel's huntress and it never got even close to any of that um <clears throat> You know, uh, family with sketchy criminal ties, her trying to be the hero. Um, daddy issues. Daddy issues. Yeah. Like, this is straight up Huntress, um, but with a bow and arrow instead of a crossbow. That's it. I mean, they even both wore purple. Um, so, no. Huntress wore it better. It yeah. Oh, yeah. Huntress definitely wore it better. Um and but no there's this is this is vapid this is bland this is every single terrible modern comic book trope except for the i mean they even did the lol so random bad guys with a bunch of bellhops and a juggler at, at, at this place like <clears throat> Like, I swear to God, like, I hate to break this to you, Wes. I know you're probably going to be disappointed, but I got five bucks says the bad guy's going to be arcade and it's going to be done really, really poorly because I know he's no, your they favorite. They wouldn't do villain. that at arcade. Arcade is too important to have to worry about Kate Bishop. Oh, no, they're going to do it. Uh, this, if, if you haven't figured out that this is basically a super villain fun house, um, like like a super villain dollhouse funhouse. Um, well, that's what it looked like in the art when they introduced the estate. Exactly, it looks like a dollhouse. Absolutely. Yeah, and they're definitely, you know, they're trying to do. Look, the the uh, the the writers even already kind of telegraphing her move. I guess it's a her. I think it's a her. I, I don't know. Regardless, this person, the writer, has telegraphed their move, and. Um, they're going to try to do a knockoff version of Clue. Except for all it's going to be is Arcade in the something with the something over and over again. And it's going to be really, really boring. <clears throat> the only thing, I think the only thing that the only trope the only terrible modern comic trope. We've hit Secret Sisters. We hit um, LOL So Random Bad Guys. We hit uh, absurd amounts of using text messages to push the narrative forward um, in the place of like caption boxes or internal monologue. Um, 
I think the only thing we're missing from modern tropes is uh, lesbians. I mean, wow, well, we might not be missing. They just haven't announced. Well, it. yeah, I mean, if, if, to this point, that's that's all we're that's all we're we're missing. Um, and OK, cool. I mean, I think we're going to get there probably eventually. Um, but, you know, obviously, hey, look, let's let's telegraph the fact that the sister's actually going to, you know, she's the one that called for help and is absolutely 110 percent going to double cross kate bishop that this shit is the <clears throat> is just horribly telegraphed if you can't figure out what's already going to happen by this first issue man i i, I respect your naivete in in comic book reading well even worse than that even if it was telegraphed it should be fun there's nothing fun in here no it's 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 cringy as hell yes. the 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 unending conversation oh and then she's just talking heads the whole time there's there's an entire double page spread of them just talking yeah of of her and her sister talking both now and in flashback in order to justify Hey, you know the secret sister that we never told you about and the scene that we never told you about? Yeah, here's the scene that we told you about with the secret sister we never told you about. Uh, so that you can actually buy into, into this comic. Just make it an old friend. Make it some girl she she grew up... You know, we knew she was a socialite. Make it one of those people from the early comics. It's not hard. But nope. Had to had to go the tropey route, um, you know, and, and like, oh, oh, the other trope we got, the, oh my god, I love you so much, they can't just leave, they have to get validated on the way out, and oh, yeah. like when she was you leaving, you what that like, is, yeah, um, yeah, that that shit, I'm like, you know. If you that was an entire that was what <clears throat> two pages three pages um for that scene and it was a complete waste of three pages i i don't care about these well pages. it was a complete waste of 24 pages let's not be yeah i know let's but, not beat uh, around the bush here doc there's nothing yeah. redeeming about this book the art's not very good uh the illustrations themselves may be fine from here and there but there's no visual storytelling there's nothing uh, kinetic about this it's it, the art's bad the the story's worse there's nothing redeeming about this at least with harley quinn there's a redeeming factor you get that little kevin story arc where you see a little bit of heroing going on here you got superheroing rules and talking to the camera and using her phone as a weapon and all this stupid crap um and all of her i've got to say arrows. marvel takes it this week as far as as the worst heroine out there i would say the cape Kate Bishop Hawkeye's story is is worse than the Harley Quinn story, not because of Harley Quinn, but before because of Kevin. So I guess the guys ruled the day again. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to agree with you on this. Uh, the redeem. There was one redeeming thing though in in Kate Bishop, and that was that if the uh, if the artist ever wants another job, he had a pretty good. Um, uh the resume you know kind of proof of work to be the to design the next version of that uh surprise hotel game video that always starts before a lot of your videos I, i've never watched my videos from the u.s <laughs> what i always see is shopping <laughs> no they have <clears throat> They have this, it's really, with this really, really obnoxious jingle about spinning rooms around, and I, I, it's irritating as shit. But he well, I want to apologize to the one. viewers. I don't get to choose who advertises. But, uh, but hey, he's he's able to, uh, he, he can he can put in his uh, his resume there to, to do their sequel, because he obviously knows how to design a hotel for 38 people or 500 Adult people with, with, with exactly two bedrooms. 
All right, Doc, let's not waste our time on this anymore. We are intentionally looking for the worst of the worst, and I think we we struck pay dirt this week. Harley Quinn was as bad as advertised, but there was a redeeming factor. Uh, Kate Bishop Hawkeye continues to be completely misused by Marvel Comics. We'll never get over until they treat the character seriously and actually treat her like a three-dimensional character and try to do something with it. This wooden, you know, vapid, lame-ass two-dimensional version of the character is never going to happen. 